Father, we thank you for our Bible study once again today. Baba, wa le kasi adupelo wanyi po e kobi be litroni. We thank you for the great patriarchs you are teaching us about their faith. Adupelo wanyi po e baba la ti e nko wanyi po e bagbo. Thank you because of those who are walked the same way before us. Adupelo wanyi po e awaka ti to eru ana ti awanda nto yiri. They walk by faith. Kwanri ne pa e bagbo. They live by faith. Kwa bagbo ya yin wanyi pa e bagbo. And they died in faith. Kwa si kusi ni bagbo. They kept the faith. Till the end of their lives. And you have made us to have the privilege of coming to learn through their lives. We are praying, O Lord, that the same faith you gave unto them, you give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. As they live the life pleasing unto you by faith. We are praying that you you grant us that same faith to live lives that are pleasing unto you every day of our lives in Jesus name we pray that the learning of your word will be a fruit in our lives and will make us to go stronger and stronger in the way of the Lord in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray we continue with our study in the epistle to the Hebrews. Already as you know, we have covered verses 1 to 19. And a single thing that is pointed out in every one of these people that we have studied is their faith in God. In chapter 11 verse 4, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Ori koko la se kerin ni pa igbagoni Abel iru ebo si olorun ti o so juti kain ni lo. In verse five, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Ni se karo ni pa igbagoli asi no ku ni koko da ku masiri ku. In verse seven, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, he moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house, he obeyed the Lord. In passage, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And then he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. In verse 11, through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. In verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. He that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. In verse 18, by the central thing that is pointed out in their lives is the faith by which they followed God all the way through. Which means then, as the Lord is looking at our lives, is looking at our faith. All the circumstances in our lives, the situations we pass through, the tests and the trials that come to our attitude to the commandment of the law. Everything that we do in life, there is one thing God is going to single out. One thing the Lord is going to examine. He's going to look at the faith by which we are following Him, walking with Him, and pleasing Him. The study of today brings us to verse 20 through verse 20. In verse 20, by faith, 
Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Verse 21, by faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, and he worshipped leaning upon the top of his tower. Verse 23 By faith, Joseph, when he died, that is when he was dying, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and he gave commandment concerning his bones. The text of today brings three men before us. I seek Jacob and Joseph. And once again, he's talking about their faith. We need to notice that these three men are frequently and favorably mentioned in Scripture. Their faith, especially at the hour of death, is presented to us now as a model. They believe God, the God of Abraham. They walked with God, the God of Abraham. Through the many tests and troubles and tasks in their lives, they were walking by faith. They demonstrated strong faith in God until the end of their earthly pilgrimage. And at the end of the life of each of them, the greatest thing they were able to pass on to their children was the promise of God rather than material things. And we need to know that as you consider Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, the scripture has a lot to say about them. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Have you noticed the record in Genesis? There are 50 chapters in Genesis. Verses 1, uh, chapters 1 to 11, talk about many, many, many people. And yet it is very noteworthy, it is striking that from chapter 12 to chapter 50, you have four main characters that are spoken about. Chapters 12 to 25 are devoted to the life of Abraham. 25 to 27 to the life of Isaac. 28 to 35 devoted to the life of Jacob. 37 to 50 devoted to the biography of Joseph. As you look at the chapters and you analyze. 13 and half chapters are given to Abraham. Two and a half given to Isaac. 13 given to Jacob. And we have 14 chapters devoted to the life of Joseph. Although they occupy different space in the scripture. They had something in common. And that was their faith in God. From the beginning that they come up in scripture. We have faith at the beginning of their lives. We have faith during the long fruitful lives that they live. And then of course at the end of their lives we see them manifesting faith in God. And it was a faith in God at the final hour that permitted them to enter into eternal glory, eternal fellowship, eternal communion with their God. 
Obviously, these men must be very important. Because you look at the people in Genesis. And some of the people in Genesis, you have only half of a verse devoted to them. Other people in the book of Genesis, you have only one single verse devoted to them. He was born, he lived, he died, nothing else. The Lord wants to teach us a lot of things in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Because of that, he has preserved a lot of chapters for us, telling us about their lives, and the book of Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews, singles out their faith in God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, ati joseph to ri be ni olorun se fi aye gba opolopo ri lati ko nipa igba aye won ba kan na iwe beru wa so nipa igba gbo tin be ninu won looking at the three men we are studying today so ba wa won okunrin meta ta won lo there is something that strikes you in their life o ka yo mi ogbigi ninu won fi aye won the presence of god was real to each of them i fara ho olorun wa pelu aye won i see god said i will be with thee and will bless thee fun aye fun isaaki olorun wi pe emi o pelu re emi o si buku fun o jacob god said behold i am with you i will not leave thee until i have done that which i spoke to you all concerning joseph the record we read about him is that the lord was with joseph joseph what do you draw from that there is an inseparable link between the presence of god and your faith in god the presence of god produces faith in our lives and our faith also keeps and retains the presence of god in our lives the one helps the other, the one increases the other. They are the presence of God with them and they have faith in God. Today we're looking at these three men. We're looking at the faith of Isaac. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20. By faith Isaac. We are also looking at the faith of Jacob. In verse 21, by faith, Jacob. And then we are looking at the faith of Joseph. By faith, Joseph. As we look at these verses separately, there are three points we are going to look at. Number one, dominion through faith. Dominion through faith. Number two, the decree of faith. The decree of faith. Number three, departing in faith. Or departure by faith. Now we look at point number one. The dominion through faith. Once again, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20. By faith, I seek blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. We need to remind ourselves of the history of Jacob and Esau. You know that Esau and Jacob were twin brothers. And Esau was born first. And then you have Jacob. And then you now look at verse 20. It says, By faith I seek blessed. Instead of mentioning Esau first, he mentions Jacob first. 
by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. My brothers and sisters, there's a lot in that little verse I've read to you. It will take faith in God to accept the way of the Lord. It will take conviction in the wisdom of God to accept the plan of God. You will have to allow the Spirit to dominate the flesh before you will allow God to do what He planned to do. And you need to understand that this is the commentary of the Holy Ghost on what happened in the Old Testament. If you read the Old Testament, you have to read with the Spirit of God. If you do not read with the Spirit of God, a lot of questions will arise in your mind. Why did Isaac do what he did? Why did God confirm the blessing? In fact, you are going to say, why is the Bible saying, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come? Another thing is, you are going to, if you are not careful, you will accept the Bible, but if God does the same thing today, you will question God. Why should God bless the younger greater than the higher one, greater than the older one? Why did God place the younger one ahead in front of the older one? If we do not accept the plan of God, if we do not have faith in God, if we do not dominate and have dominion by faith, we will not appreciate when God exalts the younger, exalts the person that is behind and brings him to the front. We will not know it's the plan of God, it's the desire of God. And if we are following God by faith, it is good to accept the plan of God the way it is and have dominion by faith. Let's look at the story now in Genesis chapter 25. Reading from verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years uh, old when he took Rebekah to wife. The daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Do you understand here the faith of Isaac? Last week we learned about the faith of Abraham. But we didn't understand at that time because we didn't talk about Isaac too much. We were talking about Abraham. Abraham that Abraham passed the test of God. God said, Rise up and take your son, your only son Isaac. Offer him to me in the mountain that I will show you. And then he took the wood, he took the knife, he took the fire. And while he was going, he, he let the two servants stay behind. And he told the servant I and this lad will go up yonder and worship the Lord and we will come back again. And Abraham and Isaac and they went on. Abraham at Isaac was in law. Remember, two cannot work together except they be agreed. They were together in faith. While they were going on the way, Isaac has an important 
important question. My father, here is wood, here is a fire. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the lamb? The lamb for the sacrifice. My son, the Lord Himself will provide the lamb for the sacrifice. That simple answer satisfied Isaac because Isaac had faith in God. They go to the place of sacrifice. And now the, the father laid his son on the altar. No fighting. No conflict. No argument. No rebellion. No resistance. Doesn't that show you the faith of Isaac? And then the Lord called unto the father. Lay no hand upon that child. Now I know that you fear me. I seek rose up. And Isaac never asked any question. Doesn't that show you the faith of Isaac? And then the sacrifice and the worship the Lord and they came back. He had not married. He was not going beyond the age of 30. And 35. And 37. And there is no argument to the father. His mind was at rest. Doesn't that show you the faith of Isaac? And then the head servant was sent away to go and look for a wife. And you will see the patience and the peace of mind of Isaac. At the age of 40, this Isaac then became married to Rebecca. And you will see the face of this man. The first year, the second year, there was no child. The tenth year, the fifteenth year, there was no child. Until the twentieth year, I seek still at the father. And yet this father, that is uh, Abraham, was not the one that Isaac was saying, you must pray for me, you must pray for me. Isaac himself went to pray. And Isaac entreated the Lord. Because the wife was barren. Oh, Isaac said, there is no big problem here. My mother Sarah was barren for 25 years after the marriage and they were expecting me mine is still just 20 years there is no problem at all my father believed in God my mother believed in God I believe in God and the faith of our fathers living still. And you see Rebecca herself. In verses 22 and 23. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. That shows her the spiritual life of the wife as well. When we read about Abraham, we read about Sarah. I told you at that time what a wonderful thing it is for the husband and the wife to be walking together in the same direction by strong faith in God. And I will find the wife also of Isaac inquiring from the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy powers. The one people shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Here you will find that God used his knowledge of these children because all things are known unto God before those things 
things take place. And this is not predestination. It is the foreknowledge of God. He knew the one that will serve him. He knew the one that will appreciate the bus ride. He knew the one that will build an altar like Abraham. He knew the one that will pray. He knew the one that will call upon the God of Abraham. He knew the one whose hearts will be seeking after him. Because of that knowledge of God about Jacob, he promoted him beyond Esau. We don't find Esau building an altar unto the Lord. We don't find Esau praying unto the Lord. We don't find Esau appreciating the birthright. We don't find Esau meditating upon the blessing of Abraham. We do not find Esau in any spiritual mode of mind. He knew that man before he was born that his heart will be hard that his heart will not be seeking after God and the Lord loves the people who are served, the people who are seeking him, the people who love him, the people who are adoring and worshipping him. Because of that, God decided that Jacob will get the blessing, the blessing of Abraham. It appeared as a problem here. Hey, look at it now in verse 28. In uh, Genesis chapter 25 verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Isaac is a fair Esau, Nitorion Jenny Noel or Rebecca loved Jacob. So, Rebecca, fair Jacob. Whenever there is division between husband and wife, there's going to be a problem. Nigba Kiba, Yapaba, Larry, Tokotaya, Wala, Yo Jadimbe. That division will distract and will almost destroy your faith. Igba, I saw Kato, Larry, our major, Yapa, Yo Fair Piba. Once the husband and the wife are walking in different directions, Directions the farther they walk in those different directions, the less and less and less their faith will become. And right now, Isaac wanted to bless uh, one of the children. He wanted to transfer the blessing of Abraham upon the children. And now, what is happening here? Obviously, he had forgotten. He loved Esau so much. And because of the food of Esau, because Esau was a hunter, because of the food he had been eating, his mind, his affection, his love, his desire was upon Esau. But Rebecca, on the other hand, loved Jacob. Because before Jacob was born, the Lord had spoken to Rebecca. And after those children were born, the mother started noticing those children that Jacob's heart was sore that Jacob was flexible that Jacob was seeking the Lord he began to see the trace of Abraham and the trace of the spiritual life of Isaac he began to see it in Jacob and he was making the connection no wonder no wonder this spiritual child this humble child this child seeking the Lord is going to get the blessing now the time of the transfer of the blessing came here is where you need to pay attention now otherwise there will be confusion in your mind because now the faith of Isaac was like gold 
buried in the mud. And something needs to happen to dig up that gold. You still have faith in God, mind you. He believed that if he pronounced the word, it will be so. You still have faith in God, mind you. He believed that he had the power to transfer the blessing of Abraham. You still had faith in God. He believed that the land of promise that God had given to Abraham, that they will become a mighty nation, and that that blessing will still come. He had faith in God. He believed but something had begun to happen he thought he will transfer that blessing unto Esau because of the filial relationship the affection, the food and the love and the desire between him and Esau because Esau knew how to please him he wanted that fleshly thing now to take over from him and then transfer the blessing unto Esau in Genesis chapter 27 reading from verse 6 and Rebekah spake unto Jacob our son said behold I had thy father speak unto Esau thy brother saying bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and that and bless thee before the Lord before my day Rebecca said we fall Jacob woman repe wo mo gbo baba re wi fun Esau wara kunrin re pe mo eran igbe fun mi wa ki o si ki o si se ki o si se eran didun adidu fun mi ki emi ki o je now Rebecca too had her own plan. And she knew she had faith in God too. Brothers and sisters, if you read the story, if you do not read very well, you say they did not believe God. They did not believe God. Rebecca believed that the greatest thing that can happen to a man on earth is to get the blessing of Abraham. She believed that the blessing that will be upon their lives and that will continue beyond their lives and go from generation to generation can only be found in the covenant given to Abraham. She believed that that word had been kept in the mouth of the husband Isaac. She believed that once the husband Isaac will open his mouth like this, whatever will pour out from his mouth was a blessing of the Lord. She believed there is a God in heaven that will confirm that word on earth. She believed. But then she felt my husband is making a mistake. The Lord that told me before the children were born. The blessing is not for Esau. Esau is not spiritual. He does not qualify. He's a hard-hearted hunter. He doesn't want the blessing of Abraham. He said, glutton that has sold the birthright. She believed. But then she believed something. She believed that she could not directly go to Isaac her husband and directly contradict Isaac her husband. And now she wanted to help God. Understand, they had faith in God. But their faith was in the mall. And we need to dig that faith out. Remove all the, remove all the dirty things around that faith. So that the faith can shine forth like pure gold. 
you know the story I don't need to read all the verses to you he had a scheme a strategy of deception so as to make him Jacob go before the father and get the blessing and Jacob did that thing you know the story and then went before the father and the father said are you my son Esau and he said said, I am your son Esau. He said, I'm the one that has the birthright. I'm the one that marries to have the birthright. I'm the one that wants the blessing of Abraham. I'm the one to take the first place. Are you really my son? Are you the one I want to give the blessing to? She said, yes, I am. And then he said, come near me. He felt his hand. He his clothes and everything appeared as if it was Esau. And he said, it is the hand of Esau. But it's the voice of Jacob. And then he went ahead to bless Jacob. Now let me stop for a moment. Now, suppose they didn't help God out. Suppose Rebecca did not do what he did. Suppose he so had been allowed to go in there. What would have happened? God would have put the word, the right words in the mouth of Isaac. God told Moses in Exodus chapter 4 verse 12, I will be with your mouth. I'll put the word in your mouth. Is, is it God that opened the mouth of the ass to speak the vo- with the voice of a man? Was it not that same God that followed Balaam and he opened his mouth? He wanted to cause the children of Israel and God turned everything to a blessing. Just just I from verse 49, was it not God that put the mouth, the, that put the word in the mouth of the high priest and he said that Jesus Christ will die for the whole world was it not God that put the word in the mouth of Gamaliel and he said don't touch this man if this work be of God nobody can destroy it let us be found fighting against God. He didn't need to help God out. If they had not done what they did, the blessing will still come to the right person. But eventually their faith came out of the mall. Eventually after Isaac had blessed Jacob, his son now came and he said my father rise up and eat a brother food you like come and bless me and Isaac said who is that he said I'm Esau your son he said but somebody came here and he had got the blessing already ah, then his faith came out then he realized that although there are many plans of man but God has the final say. You see, my brothers and sisters, as we are trying to get married, and we know we need to get to that marriage committee, then we begin to plan, then we begin to make a strategy, because we forget God is greater than marriage committee. And we think if we don't plan any strategy, God will forget and God will not bring the blessing. God will never forget. I said God will never forget. In Genesis chapter 27 verse 33. I want you to hear the words of Isaac. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he? that had taken the venison and brought it to me 
and have eaten all of all before thou camest, and then listen to this, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Isaac is still worried, giddy giddy recoja, or see, pay, turn in la, turn in it, you keep a rank bear, see, you see, bet on me, wa, a missity, Jenny, no go go, a key, what all day, what that is a lay you, a missity, so reform. He said, "You saw. Now I understand. You never wanted that thing. You will never get it." And he saw began to weep. And, and even the tears of his soul could not change his six mind. Once he knew the plan of God, once he knew what God really wanted to do, he became as firm as a rock. He made a mistake before. But now he discovered that maybe you had made a mistake before. Oh, don't say now I cannot manifest faith anymore. I have gone astray. I have made a mistake. Because of that, my faith will never be strong. Wake up. Your faith can still be strong. Wake up. You can still be as firm as a rock. Wake up. You can still follow the plan and the way of God. And so I seek now maintain that position, and he said, He has been blessed, yea, he shall be blessed. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. No matter the plans of your enemy, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. No matter the people that are in conspiracy planning against your life, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Come back to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at it once again. In verse 20, we're talking about dominion. How did Jacob have dominion? By faith. How did Rebekah have dominion? By faith. How did Isaac have dominion? By faith. How did the spirit have dominion over the flesh? By faith. How did what God has spoken before unto Rebekah now have dominion on the private plan and the partiality that uh, Isaac wanted to have. How did that have dominion? By faith. In verse 20 we have, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Now we go to the second point. Here is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Now we have the decree of faith. It's good to follow the law. And it's good to have faith in God. And now we come to the life of Jacob. And I want to remind you once again, like I did uh, when I was talking about Isaac. As you look at uh, as you look at Jacob, you will see that from the very beginning, uh, there was something at the center of his heart. The birthright, the birthright that linked him up to the blessing of Abraham was uppermost in his heart. There was something in his heart as he heard about the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. And he knew that from generation to generation, all the generations of people worshipping God, they will be saying, 
saying, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. He wanted everybody that will say God of Abraham, God of Isaac, to join it with the God of Jacob. And that was at the very center of his heart. And he are facing God. That, that blessing of Abraham. Abraham that passed on to Isaac. Would eventually pass on to him. And it was so. And eventually. After he had got the blessing. Almighty God confirmed it. In Genesis chapter 28. And I want you to see the confirmation of the law. It wasn't just the desire of Rebecca. It wasn't just the, the, uh, the word of Isaac. It was the confirmation of God Almighty Himself. In Genesis chapter 28. Reading from verse 13. Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereupon thou liest to thee, I will give it unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The Lord mighty God gave him the blessing of Abraham. Verse 15, and behold, I will be with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again unto this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee all. He went to the house of Laban. He kept on believing the Lord. His link with God never broke. And eventually the Lord spoke to him and told him to come back. While he was coming back, he heard that he saw was coming to approach him. So he became a prey. Then you now see his face again shining for. He said, Oh God, that's in his prayers. He said, I'm not worthy of all these things you have given me. Are you not the one that told me to come back? Now I hear that he saw his coming. And he's going to destroy both the children and the women on the floor. He said, Oh God, you must fulfill your promise. And then he sent all his families ahead. And then in the night, he was, he was wrestling with an angel. And then the angel said, let me go now because it break, did not break her. Then you see his persistent faith. He said, I will not let you go except you bless me. Well, you know his life story. Eventually, they were in Egypt. Because Joseph had been sold into Egypt. And now he was nearing the end of his life. And as you look at the end of Genesis, that has 48 and 49, you see old Jacob now, he wanted to bless the children. He first of all called Joseph. You know why he called Joseph? Because a double portion should be given to the firstborn. But Reuben the firstborn had defiled the bed of Jacob. Because of that, they said the double portion must go to Joseph. How will the double portion get to Joseph? Joseph had two children. 
Joseph knew my name. Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh at Ephraim. And now he wanted to give the blessing to Manasseh and to Ephraim. Oh, what fair people could not for Manasseh at Ephraim. Double portion in the whole land. That's why, as read of uh, the tribes of Israel, you find that one tribe is Ephraim. The other tribe is Manasseh. And those two belong to Joseph. He gave Joseph the portion of the firstborn. Now let us look at the, at the way he manifested faith. In Genesis chapter 48. Before, before I read the account uh, how he blessed Ephraim and Manasseh. In verse 10 is very, very important. Genesis chapter 48, verse 10. Genesis Now the eyes of Israel, that's of Jacob, were dim for age, so that he could not see. That really now tells us about his faith. I will explain to you as we read the scripture. Notice, notice his eyes were dim because of age. He could not recognize the children very well. Look at it now from verse 13. And Joseph took them both, a frame in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand, towards Israel's right hand, before them, and near unto him. Look up here. He put the younger on the left. He put the older on the right. So that the right hand, which is the most useful hand, the most profitable hand, and the most important hand, and or the better hand, uh, for many, many people, so that the right hand will transfer the greater blessing is a stronger hand. And so that the left hand will give the less unto the younger. Awasitire, awamu ibu kekere sorry omade. And his eyes were dim. Oju resin tabi And he didn't know who was who. Kosi menti se no amede. And then with the dim eyes, wanted to bless the children. By faith he crossed his hand. Ni pa iba ba oda ba wana. And he put the he put the higher one, the greater one, the more profitable one. The one that will give the stronger blessing, he crossed his hand and he put it on the younger. Then the left, uh, the left hand, the one that will give the less blessing, he put it on the on the uh, on the older one. <laughs> In verse 17, when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up, he held the hand of his father. And then he removed it to put it uh, uh, from Ephraim's head and to put it on Manasseh's head. And Joseph said, My father, not so, not so, not so, not so, my father. For he is the firstborn. Put that right hand upon his head. Ah, the father answered. Don't think that because my eyes are dim that I don't know what I'm doing. It is by faith, it is not by merit. I know that he is younger. Natural mind will not 
I will not comprehend the mind of God in giving the greater blessing to the younger. In verse 19, his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. I'm not walking by sight. The eyes are dim. I'm walking by faith. I pray God will open our eyes that we will, we will walk by faith and not by sight. And you see what God has done here? Once again, he has repeated that same thing in giving the greater blessing to the younger one. Do you know sometimes we quarrel? I have come before you in our district. I'm older than you are in our district. I know more than you know in our district. You are the young one in our district. And now somehow, somehow, the greater blessing comes upon the people that have just come. And then myself there, I've been there for a long time, and I came before you, I begin to fight, I begin to quarrel, I think I am fighting coordinator, I think I'm fighting the pastor, I am fighting against God, who has promoted the younger, and has lowered the older one. And I begin to take some negative decisions. Because how can they do it like that and promote the younger one, the one that has just come, the one that I followed up, the one that I taught in discipleship class, how can they bring him and bring him above me? And I begin to say, now I know the church is not following the Lord anymore. So you see what they are doing? We who have been here for such a long time, see the way they are relegating us to the background. See these people that are just coming. See the way they are promoting them. See the way they are treating them. See the way they are, everybody is honoring them as if they know more than we know. Now I know the church is making a great mistake. My brother, it is not a mistake. Uh, Jacob said, I know it, my son, I know it. Verse 20, but Rachel said, Promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put us down one and set us up another. And so once again we see the manifestation of faith in the life of Jacob. But you know something that we have not discovered? In the life of Jacob, his faith made him to refuse the desire and the demand of Joseph whom he loved very much. There are times, my brothers and sisters, when your faith in God will make you to refuse, to reject the suggestion and the desire and the wish of people that you love and the people that love you. While they are walking by sight and they are removing your hand from Ephraim and they are saying not so, it cannot be so. Because you are walking by faith, you said, yes, I know it. Yes, I know it. It is your faith that gives you the courage to reject and to refuse the suggestions of the people that are walking by side. Sometimes we 
ti o le je pe ni patara ni won rin sugbon igbagbo to ni ninu olorun ni o je ko ko aba ati ete ti won da logbon i come back to hebrews chapter 11 verse 21 mo pada se be ro ri kokan la ese ikokan ni logo and see the final thing we read about jacob a wa ri ohun ti a so pa gba ni pa jacob the final thing the holy ghost has preserved on record for the life of jacob ohun to gbe yen ti e mi ma fi kan wa ninu iwe mi ma ni pa igbe aye jacob it says by faith jacob when he was a dying blessed both the sons of joseph and worshipped leaning upon the top of his star. Ni pa igba gbo ni Jacob ni gba ti o nku lo o sure fun awon omo Joseph ni oko kan o si teri ba o sin mi le ori opa re. What a happy ending. Iru igbe yin to dara won. There was no curse in his mouth while he was dying. Ko si egun lenun re ni gba to nku lo. No regret in his mouth when he was dying. Ko si aba ma lenun re ni gba to nku lo. No remorse in his life when he was dying. Ko si ki ka ba ma yi eni ni pa igbe yin ni gba to nku lo. I when he was dying. Ko fi ka hanun pe kun lo wa gbegbe aye bayi fun ni gba to nku. There was no regret at all saying that I know. Ko si ko ka ba ma rara pe oro mi. Told that while he was dying. As of when he leaned upon his staff worshipping the Lord. O si mi le o ri opa re o te ri ba si Oluwa. Because to die the death of the righteous. Ki Olorun ko fa ye go lati ku iku olodo. You end be like the end of the righteous people. Ki igbe yin re ko si ri bi igbe yin Now we come to point number 3. Ni ba ya lo si koko keta. Departing in faith. Li lo ni igbagbo. Departure by faith. Li lo ni pase igbagbo. It's very very difficult to talk about uh, Joseph and not be excited. O le lopopopo lati so ni Joseph ki ori eyan ko moya. Let me just read this verse to you to start with. Je ki nkoko ka ese yi fun e lati bere. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 22. Ninu ebe ro ri kokan lese kejili logo. Joseph when he died that is when he was nine he made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and he gave commandment concerning his bones. Ni pa igbagbo ni Joseph nigbati o nku lo I want you to please single out that word departing. He said departing, he was departing and he spoke about the children of Israel. And then I put the subtitle there as departing in faith. Don't you see the life of Joseph? That's what departure is very very important. Departing, very important in life of Joseph. He was with his father at home. The brothers were in the field watching over the animals. And the father sent him. Remember the Lord had given him, he had given him dreams. He departed from the home. While he departed from the home, he departed by faith. He knew that whatever the hatred of those brothers, I and whatever their hatred, whatever their plan, whatever their conspiracy, will not cancel the dream that God had given me. Because into the midst of the of his brothers. Ah, they came the dream and they said the dreamer is coming. They said, let us kill him. Eventually they decided they were going to sell him. Once again, he departed from the family. They sold him into slavery. He departed in faith. There was something in the heart of that young man. That even though you are sending me away from your meal, I depart in faith. What God has said, he will fulfill. He got into Egypt. And he got to the house of Potiphar. Once again, he had to depart out of that place. They told the lie against him. He departed out of that place and went to the prison. Departing, he departed in faith. He got into the prison and the presence of the Lord was with him. And then one of those people he interpreted dream for. It was now with Pharaoh. And when Pharaoh had a dream, he said, I remember my fault now. There is a young man in the prison. When we had dreams and nobody to interpret, he interpreted 
sent to the prison and he called him out and he departed out of the prison he departed in faith with that thing that dream in his mind every time I depart every time I depart I'm departing in faith I'm a step nearer the blessing I'm a step nearer the fulfillment the dream is coming true he departed in faith he came to the presence of Pharaoh and now he interpreted the dream unto Pharaoh and Pharaoh said there is no other person that can do this thing except you because you have the spirit of God in you what does the Bible say? he left the presence of Pharaoh to go to all of, his, uh, to go to all of Egypt and gather the grain he departed in faith that there will be plenty and he will gather the plenty. Every time he departed, he departed in faith. Now, he was going to depart the world. To go to the very presence of Almighty God. Oh, he said, now I'm departing again. I'm always departing and departing and departing. As I depart now, I leave this world, he departed in faith. And then what did he say when he was leaving this world? When he was quitting, when he was leaving by faith. And look at Genesis chapter 50. In Genesis chapter 50, reading from verse 24, verse 25. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I died. And God shall surely will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which is where to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. Joseph will see if one wara kuni rekwe emeku olor yosi beni wo ni toto yo mo yi jade kro ni le yi si le ti obura fun Abraham fun Isaac ati fun Jacob. That is the promise God had given to Abraham. Iya ni ile ri ti olor se fun Abraham. It had not been totally fulfilled. O ti se pata pata. There was no doubt in the heart of Joseph. Ko si ye meji lo kan Joseph. He said I am living. O ni mo nlo. He said I am dying. Mo nku lo bayi. He said God will surely definitely certainly visit you. O ni daju daju Olor yo be yin wo ni toto. He will bring you out of this land. Yo mo yi and then he said he will take you unto the land which is where unto Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and I want you to look at the promises referring to in Genesis chapter 15 in Genesis chapter 15 reading from verse 13 and he said unto Abraham no of a shorty that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance <laughs> Won si je won ni iya ni irinwo odun ati orilede na pelu ti won o ma sin le emi o da lejo leyin na ni emi ni won si jade ti awon ti opo pupo That's the promise of it but to Abraham it was referring to Eleni buko ileri Abraham to ka I want you to see something very clearly now Mo fe ko ori nkan kan to ran gban gban ni Joseph knew something very important Joseph mo nkan kan to se fata He knew that God gave him a promise O mo pe Olorun fun ni ileri Concerning the uh, through those dreams Ni pa se awon alawon yi He knew that although times pass years pass it was eventually fulfilled O mo pe bi o ti le je pe ojo nre koja ti he knows that whenever God gives a revelation whenever God gives a vision there is an appointed time when that vision will be fulfilled he knew that in his own personal life and he thought about the blessing about the promise God had given to Abraham he knew that as the blessing God promised him at an appointed time the promise that God has given Abraham 
Abraham at an appointed time. Oh, my God, 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 be it to your Lord of Nia, Coco, to your Lord, you almost a bag, Gani, let it to your Lord Abraham, Nia, Coco, to your Lord. He said, I am sure the Lord will definitely, surely visit you. Only by all us of Bang Bape, a Mima, that you are your Lord, you obey. I back up chapter two, verse three. I back up Kori, KJS, and Keta. I back up chapter two, verse three. I back up Kori, KJS, and Keta. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Nitori, you are not getting back at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry beauty like duro de nitori nidi de yo de ki yo pe a joseph said i've learned in my life joseph ni mo ti keko yin ninu aye ni never fight with any man ni o nbe ni keni ja never quarrel with any man ni o nbi nu si eni keni because whatever god said will be will be Nit- wait for it nitori pe o n toro so pe yo sele yo sele duro de he said the heavens may be troubled and the sea may roar and the mountains may move and my relatives may fight and everybody may go against the thing the Lord has revealed to me but don't worry the vision the revelation the dream is for an appointed time oh so bang bang ipe orun le daru ki omi okoko ma mi awon ibatan mi le fowo so wo po ki awon oto ma gbogun lori awon iran ti olorun ti fun aye mi fo kan bale o ti olorun ba ti so pe yo se yo se because of what the lord has done in his life nitori o tolorun ti se ninu aye he was not telling the children of israel o wa so pe awon ma israel said i'm going away o ni mo nlo bayi i'm departing o ni mo nlo bayi i always departed i'm departing in faith mo ti ma nlo jade tele tele ni pa igbagbo oluwa yo si be yi o take you out of this land a mo yin jade ku ni le he will take you to the land of promise a mo yin lo si ile le ri and look at what he said wa wo nkan to so in in genesis chapter 12 Verse 25. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry my bones from hence. Joseph will see more, and one man Israel will bore away. Pe, O Lord, you be in one into two. He said, I am dying now. When I die, the Lord will visit you. My soul is going to heaven. My spirit is going to heaven. But we are going to possess that promised land together. Therefore, you will take my bone out of this place. The portion I shall possess, you carry my bone, my bone will possess that promised land. You have that faith in God that God cannot fail. He started with God. He continued with God. He ended with God. As you look at the lives of these men we are studying today, that even when they were dying, there was no word of unbelief. There was no word of doubt. They believed the Lord till the very last day. Breath that they breathe here on earth. And you have seen the life of Joseph. And you see at a young age, he had a son that was born to be a slave. And he 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 was born to be could destroy his face. No demon could remove his face. No mountain could crush his face. It was face stronger than every devil, stronger than every demon, stronger than every problem here on the face of the earth. He continued till the very end and what God said he will do, God did it and when he was leaving this world, he left victoriously and gloriously in a majestic way and said, I'm leaving. You are going to possess the land. I will possess it with you. Carry my bone over there will possess the promised land together o gbe nipa igbagbo gbogbo nkan to se nipa igbagbo o da bi anipe igbagbo re o lagbara lori emi esu lori esu fun rara re lori wahala ati la sigbo ninu aye nitori na nigba to nfi aye isile o so gba ngba wi pe ile le ri to olorun se le ri yen o di dada a o jo gba ni nitori na ti ba fe da se wa gba le ri na pelu wa you possess the promised land with us mo ni se wa gba le ri na pelu 
space in your heart. So Base that fire cannot burn. Base that the sea cannot drown. Base that trouble cannot take away. Base that the mountain cannot cause. Is that faith still there? Is it still alive? Are you rejoicing in the Lord? Are you hopeful in the Lord? Do you know there is an appointed time? Do you know that God cannot fail? Do you know that what he has said he will fulfill? Do you know that dream will be fulfilled? That vision will be fulfilled? That revelation will be fulfilled? That word will be fulfilled? Do you know that your God cannot fail? Is your faith alive? Is your faith active? Do you believe the Lord? Do you know he cannot fail? Do you know we are going to possess the promised land together? Rise up and you tell the Lord. A people believe it. Rise up and tell the Lord. I will keep on believing. Rise up and tell the Lord. I will keep on believing. While the rain is falling, I believe God. While the sun is shining, I believe God. While the enemies are forming, I believe God. While the demons are running about, I believe God. While the fire is burning, I believe God. While the opposition is rising, I believe God. He will do what he said he will do. He will accomplish what he said he will accomplish. There are not enough demons out of hell. There is not a devil out of hell. There are no enemies wherever they are coming from. There are no circumstances. There are no situations that can drown your faith in God. Let that face shine brighter. Let that face speak louder. Let that faith act in a positive way in your life. Believe the Lord. Believe the Lord. He will not fail. We can possess the promised land. We can possess the promised land. We can possess the promised land. Move on by faith. Speak by faith. Act by faith. Live by faith. Stand by faith. Pray in faith. Lean upon the Lord by faith. Whatever the oppositions may be. Ah, yes, we know the persecutors are there. We know the people that say they will see what will become of our dream. We know they are there. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Run in faith. Talk in faith. Pray in faith. Do everything in faith. There is not an ocean that can drown the faith of a believing child of God. Believe the Lord is still on the throne. Believe the Lord is still on the throne. Believe the Lord is still on the throne. Isaac believed. He blessed Jacob by faith. Jacob believed. He blessed Manasseh and Ephraim by faith. Joseph believed. He mentioned the departing of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by faith. Let us believe God. God will not fail. Though that vision may tarry, wait for it. It will be fulfilled at the appointed time.